Good morning, you bad, beautiful bitches. You, it is Wednesday morning. Still freezing in Boston. That's why I have freezing. a turtleneck on currently, <laughs> but less about me, more about you. How are you doing? Freezing. I know. Yeah. Yoy soy frio. I, I think we need to go on a vacation. I think we need to warm the hearts of people in need. Today, we're doing a live caller relationship hotline. <laughs> Honor one says, uh, when is it okay to say I love you for the first time? Here we go. Hello. Oh, why, hello. <laughs> What's up? You hey. are on the Relationship Hotline here on the Little Woods Podcast live with the wife and I. How are hello. we doing? Hello. I'm doing good. Thanks for calling. Your question was, when is it okay to say I love you for the first time? Is that right? Yes, yes. Give, yeah. us, give us some details. What's happening on, in your world um, there? So I've been dating this guy for about three and a half months. Mm -hmm. And this last weekend, um, we were just having like the best time and got to the point where I was like laughing so hard. We're both crying. And I actually started crying to the point where I was just like happy tears <laughs> <laughs> crying. I love it. <laughs> because I just like, this is the first time I felt this in seven years. I'm divorced. I have two kids. And uh, I like held it back. It didn't say what I wanted to say in that moment. Mm -hmm. And um, I get to see him again this weekend because I have my boys during the week and I'm like, when should I say it? Mm. <laughs> I or that. if I should even say it, I don't know. It makes me nervous. <laughs> you should share with her your story of how you first Please, said I love yeah. you. Because that <laughs> so could... So funny. So, um, Kevin, I, so I accidentally actually said it first. Um, mm -hmm. So we were with my sisters on the rooftop and I I was basically kind of one of those situations too. Like you're just laughing, you're so happy and like your voice, mm -hmm. you just, you talk. And I I just said something like, this is why I love you or something. And I like immediately was like, oh my God. And of course my two sisters are there. So like they're freaking out. Like I'm freaking oh. out. Um, but Kevin could tell that I kind of didn't mean to say it. Like yeah. I did mean it but I didn't mean to say it so he mm -hmm. also didn't want you know to come back and say it and then freak me out plus his sisters were there so mm -hmm. for the next like two nights I cried myself to sleep because I was like <laughs> he doesn't love me like I feel so stupid like and we were actually right at like that three month mark as well totally yep and I remember just yeah. being like this kid's like a loser like he's wasting his three months with me and doesn't even love me why didn't he say it back mm -hmm. and then we mm -hmm. went on a date and I started bawling my eyes out crying um mm -hmm. at dinner and I was like you didn't say it back and he was like Ashley like of course I love you I just you you <laughs> didn't seem like you like meant it and all this miscommunication so I honestly think I think a couple of things one if it's three and a half months in and you guys are like seriously seeing each other obviously you guys yeah. know that you're together no one's mm -hmm. gonna like waste their own time if they don't mm -hmm. actually feel that way and then the other side of me is also like screw it if you say it and he doesn't feel the same way back or doesn't say it back well then there's kind of your answer and you shouldn't waste any more of your time as well with him um, yeah I, I was thinking that thing I was thinking the exact same way I just it's so nerve-wracking like oh, having yeah. it come out oh, it <laughs> is <laughs> and a, a lot of this could be if it if he's anything like me the guys just don't look into it as much as the girls do like I loved her from the, the, our first date and yeah. now we're three yeah. we're three months in I never publicly said it to her but I always felt it and then once she jokingly kind of brought it out I was like oh no of, like, of course, I love yeah. you. I and mm -hmm. It didn't even dawn on me that I haven't even said it yet, yeah. you know? Yeah, he's showing all the signs. Like, right. my birthday is in a few weeks, and he's already planned out my birth, like my whole birthday day. Oh, oh he uh, loves you. That's love. <laughs> guys, guys are interesting. We're not as verbal as women, but we yeah. will show it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know? he's also trying to be cautious as well, knowing that, I mean, I don't know if he has any children as well, but no. he probably mm -mm. wants to be cautious of, you and your feelings and your family's feelings and, you know, not like overstep that. So he, he might honestly just be being a little respectful of that too mm -hmm. and wanting to make sure I you're think, in the right situation. 
Yeah, and I think he is too because we talked about like at what point will it be appropriate to meet my kids this weekend. I actually brought it up. We're like drinking champagne and just talking about it. And he said he has a rule of six months because he just wants to make sure, like most of, most importantly, just respecting the kids. Mm. And I was like, made my heart just like, oh, you're even better. Oh, that's love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this has love written so all melting. over it. <laughs> yeah, this is a love story right here in the making. You, uh, uh, I hope so. <laughs> we need we need a next date update. We'll have to stay yeah. in touch because I I honestly okay. think he's gonna be like it's well, once once you, someone says it. It'll be this big yeah. relief, and now you guys are both like, "Oh, I was going to say it way back," and blah 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 blah. Like uh. Ashley and I were like, "Oh, I, I was I met it on the first date, but never even said it." Obviously, because it's the first date. Like, <laughs> I, it'll be a lot of that. I'm assuming if he's anything like, you know, Ashley and I. Uh, yeah, he's I he's the most wonderful man I've ever dated. He's Aww. there. Every guy I've ever dated has there's always been like a yeah, he's great, but. And yeah. this dude has no butts. He's yeah. just wonderful. Oh. And those people really do <laughs> so exist. Anyways. Like I know with Kevin, I always was like, mm-hmm. there has to be a red flag somewhere. Like right. you're too perfect. And like there's some like the person that's made for you really just like you intertwine so well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I say just do it. Like life is way too short. This is big. Yeah. yeah. Big yeah. weekend here. Big I love you yeah. this Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Hello. And then happy yeah. early birthday. <laughs> yeah, happy Thank early you. birthday. Thank you. Wow. Yes. Oh my God, I'm excited <laughs> for you. Keep us keep us updated, would you? I will, I will. Thank you guys for calling. I really appreciate it. Yes, we Have love you. Day. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, bye. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. Here we go. She was great. I know. Wow. Um, that's. I think that's spot on. I think you hit it right on the head there where, you know, Someone's got to say it. She might as well say it. Yeah. The guys aren't looking too much into it. Okay, next one here. This <laughs> one's going to get a little deep here. You might have to crack into that celly over there. It's I know. It's going to get dark. I, um, I saw this one. My boyfriend broke up with me, and I still can't move on. Thought he was my husband. Tough. Hello. Bianca. Hello. Hello. Oh, my God. You are on you the relationship we hotline here on the No Limits podcast. I was just reading your message to us saying that your boyfriend broke up with you and you yes. just can't move on. And you thought he was your husband. Is that correct? That's correct. We were looking at rings the week before he broke up with me. Oh, so that's disheartening. Walk us through. Walk us through what's going on in your world. What, what were like the last few moments like? Uh, was he given any indications that a breakup was coming? Um, indications. We had just gotten a dog together. Mm. We were looking at houses because we mm. wanted to move in together. We were talking about my dream ring. Wow. We were doing couples therapy, and even our therapist said that we were doing so well. Wow. We we did everything together from our first date. We spent every weekend together. We never spent a weekend apart. Wow. And the week we got the dog, we both had vacation to train him, and it just wasn't going well. Mm. Mm. And he just gave up on me. He gave up. How long were you guys together? Two and a half years, you know? My dream was to get eloped on our anniversary this year for our three years, Mm. and he knew that, and he agreed with that, and then he just completely blindsided me. Mm. I'm interested because, like, I think my uh, first initial reaction to yours might be different as, Mm -hmm. like, the guy, but I think for me, from this outside, I mean, any guy who's going to talk about this stuff obviously means it, too. But I think yeah. there might be that sense of, like, fear, like, oh, shit, like, you know, you always talk about it, and now it's here. Um, and unfortunately, he might have just not been as ready as he liked to verbally try and say he was. And, yeah. you know, he was trying to be – he did love you, and he did want those things, but I think it probably would have been a little bit harder for him to outwardly say, I'm not ready, and hurt you that way, rather than kind of – leave it like this because I mean no guy is going to get a dog and do these things if mm. they don't mean it but the quick reaction gone I think ooh someone lives in Boston <laughs> <laughs> no Providence close enough oh, there, oh, there we go <laughs> uh, but I just think you know he must have gotten like scared I mean it is a lot like does you know? um when you guys would talk about marriage what would he say we would just talk about like 
what we wanted our life to look like. Like we couldn't wait to come home to each other. And instead of good night, I'll see you next weekend. It would be good night. See you in the morning. Mm-hmm. We would talk about kids. Yep. I was a single mom. I am a single mom. And he knew that. So he was invested in my daughter's life right. too. She's hurting. And then he ended up saying he didn't think he was a good father figure for her two and a half years in. And mm. he knew how much of a big deal it was from him to meet her. So right. I just I just feel really stupid right now. <laughs> and, and how how if you don't mind me asking, how old are you guys? Uh, I'm 20. I'm going to be 28 on Friday okay, and yep. he just turned 27 in November. So gotcha. Happy early birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What a present, right? What a oh, gift. Yeah. Uh, hey, this could be a blessing in disguise yeah. though. You know, this, uh, it, so it's interesting and she'll hate that I'm putting her on blast here. I have a twin sister who's 28 about to turn 29 in April and, uh, has been in a similar situation where, Guy she was seeing, they were talking about marriage, they were talking about kids, they were talking about buying homes together. And similar deal. He up and just moved to a different city. And she was <laughs> devastated, totally devastated. Yeah. Uh, this happened when she was, what, 26, 27? Yeah. And we kept saying, hey, thank God it happened now when you're 28 compared to, especially if you, if you guys were looking to raise a family together, if this happened when you're, you know, 36, 37, 38, yeah. it kind of changes the game of like, wait, this guy just fucked around and now ruined, you know, potentially my only good years to reproduce. God, yeah. God willing. You know what I mean? Whereas at least yeah. I kept telling my twin like, Hey, at least now. Yeah, it sucks, but damn way better happening yeah. now than at, you know, 35, 36, 37. I always say too, like, it sucks. Heartbreak sucks. Kevin's been through it. I've been through it before we found each other. Like, it sucks no matter what. And, you know, feel what you need to feel and lean on the people that are closest to you that you feel like you can confide in. Um, But at the end of the day, like, it makes so much sense being out of it. Why every relationship I cried over didn't work now that I have Kevin. And, like, the person that you're meant to be with, you might get so close each time, you know, like, oh, this person treated me so well, we talked about this, but there's something, like, missing. And at the end of the day, if he wasn't going to be the greatest father to your child, like, absolutely so obsessed, best father in the world to your child, that's not your person because you deserve better than that and so does your kid. And, like, it hurts. It sucks. I'm not saying it doesn't, but your person, there will be no question about it. There will be no pain, no nothing after that. Um, so it's just, it's, it's honestly, I've started whenever people tell me they break up with people, I've started saying like, congratulations, like now you're one step closer, you know, Mm -hmm. it can suck, but you're, you're a step closer. And the pain is oh so temporary. What do you, what do you really enjoy doing, you know, outside of work? What what, what lights you on fire? Before him, before him, I used to do dance and I Mm. hadn't done it in years. This is like, I started taking all these dance classes. Yes. I love that. Started doing a hip hop class. Yes. A contemporary class. This is like that scene from The Notebook when she's like, I used to paint. I used to paint. Because <laughs> she's in the wrong <laughs> yeah. relationship. And the guy's like, okay, well, you, why don't you just paint? And she's like, no, I used to, I used to paint. And it was like an early sign that she was in the wrong relationship. You know, yeah. you yeah. giving up dance. I mean, what an early, this is, this is like The Notebook. Is there a second notebook? Is there still there just should the one? be, but no. Okay, maybe the, maybe the notebook takes place in Rhode Island down there. Hello, <laughs> the girl who does hip hop. You got this double down on dance. Not only is it a great workout, yeah. you love doing it, you know? Yeah. Distract yourself. Distract yourself while the pain's there. The pain will subside slowly over time. You're going to get better at dance. You're going to get more fit. And then give it time. You'll notice, you, you'll understand why this happened. Yeah. You will. Yeah. It sucks right now, but you will understand. 100%. And then let's do a, a I'm going to shoot you a DM after this. Let's um let's stay in touch. We'll have to do like a 1 month, 2 month checkup on you. Oh my god, yes. I would love that cuz I'm like I need a cousin. Yeah. I want to be a <laughs> chief heart officer. Yes. I, I love that. I, I want to be a wife. Like, <laughs> yes. This can't be it. No. Yeah. no. And you will be. And you that was be. not your guy to make yeah. you that either. So this what a what a blessing, huh? Yeah. All this right. was like perfect timing because I just found out he started dating again too. <gasps> mm. I was like, oh, that hurts even more because it was only a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just mindless right now. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I mean, thank God that's happening now too. Probably if it's a month out, just knowing 
guys. Like, yeah. who knows? There, there might have been some lingering there with another lady. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Maybe it didn't yeah. start a month ago. So even better that you found out and got out now. Yeah. Um, but we believe in you. Your person's out there. We're going to stay in touch with you. Oh, thanks so much, guys. I love you both. We love, love you. you. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Bye. Later. I feel like we're Delilah. <laughs> What's Delilah? Delilah. Oh, is this your sleep song? This is like 90s mom radio. Yeah. You listen to Delilah? No, I didn't, but you guys Would did. Would you guys right? listen to in the city? Boys in the Hood? <laughs> 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 it's cool that people refer back to what we've talked about in past episodes. Yeah. Chief Heart Officer. Like, that's really interesting. Everyone wants to be a Chief Heart Officer. What? Cheat. A CHO? Cheat half. Ha- mm. <coughs> I had to say. Hard to hear. That is. Uh... Oh, hello. Why? Hello, good sir. You are on the relationship hotline on the No Limits podcast with Ashley and Kevin. How are we doing over there? Dude, what's up, Kevin? Good. Let's How are you, man? Oh, I am good, man. What's going on in your world? We're flying blind here. Oh, not too much, man. How are you? Say good. that question one more time. Good. What? How, how can we help you? What's the uh, what's going on in the land of relationships? Oh boy. Okay. So, uh, relationship. Here we go. Um, how much time do I have? Please oh. air it out. Oh boy. Hey, Ashley. How are ya? <laughs> Yo. Um, Jesus Christ. All right. So, um, <laughs> I've been with this girl, man, for uh, about 10 years. Oh. Um, we got engaged two years ago. Um, I know it was late because, uh, you know, we had a rough start. You know, we were younger. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm in my, I just, I just had 30. Everyone so, has your own timeline. Shit. You're doing great. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, things have been rocky lately. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got a couple of buddies there. Uh, they've been married for a few years now. And, you know, I did share my relationship show with them. And so, excuse me. Um, and uh, every one of them, they say, you know, like, it's not worth it. Get out of it. It's a little toxic and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. the thing is. Um, she has some medical things and I do provide for her, mm. you know, um, but also I'm military. So mm. I leave sometimes, you know, for a deployment or something like that and things like that kind of, we also have a trust issue. Mm. And so it's just all that stuff, man, it just piles up one on top of the other. So like, I don't want to pull the trigger on like breaking up with her, but at the same time, cause like, you know, I provide for her in, in some aspects. Yep. You know, at the same time, it's like it's not beneficial for me in the long run kind of thing. So I decided to give it a shot when I saw you put it on your story. So I'm like, you know, what? 100 percent, dude. Well, what's <laughs> let's double click into the, the trust thing. What is there something that happened in the past with either one of you where maybe the trust was broken with, with or me? Mostly, I'll be honest with me. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something happened in the past. Um, I was away for orders, actually. Um, and with, I mean, not to blame it on alcohol, but with the influence of that, right. uh, things kind of took a turn with someone else, but, uh, nothing more than like things didn't go to the bedroom basically. Mm. You know? L- uh, little handsy maybe. Exactly. Uh, but things kind of went to social media Oh. and then when I came back, uh, somehow she found out. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. That yep. makes sense. And so that kind of ruined the trust, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. I think at yep. the end of the day, it's all tricky. And, you know, you obviously have a big hat in the way that you want to take care of her still. But it's your life. It's your next 70 years. And you deserve to be happy in those next 70 years. And if you, you know, I don't know if it's something you guys want to do. But if you do want to bring children into the world, they deserve right. parents who love each other with, like, every fiber of their being and can communicate well and do things like that. And even if you don't want to bring children into the world, like you deserve to be excited to come home from work every day. You you have a very stressful job and thank you so much for, you know, sacrificing so much for our country. We truly appreciate it, but you need to come home and, and have that support system and have that happiness and have that relaxation rather than, and I don't, you know, yeah, right. right. I don't see that. What, um, what I have an analogy and this might really hit home. What, what branch are you? 
Air Force. Oh, this is going to fucking slam. Ready for this? Let's go. One, thank you so much for your service. Number two, this. Your support. When you are on a commercial flight, and this might change with you Air Force guys, but when the cabin pressure changes and the oxygen mass drop from the ceiling, the ins- they always get their oxygen mask. The instructions are like if you're on a commercial flight and watch watch Save the, yourself. watch the agents. Right. And why is that? Because you can't help anyone else if you can't help yourself. You know? It's a fact. Whether it's the it's flow of oxygen on a, a in the cabin of an airplane or if it's yep. in your own, you know, mind, body, and soul, you know, within you. It's it's like trying to build a home on a cracked foundation. Like you're trying to scale and build up, and the foundation's like you're not gonna want to build up. This is not. We're gonna stay right on the ground. So yeah, it's like I I think you already, you know, knew the answer coming into this call. Where it's like I did, I uh, did. It's just it's one of those things. To be honest, with you, that's you know, like it's one of those things. Like I'm looking for that advice. I don't know. I keep getting the same advice. Yeah, but it's like it's hard to. How do you say it? Like, let it sink in because I'm kind of like, uh, how do you say it? Like, putting a blind eye to it because I do have love for this person. Yeah. This person also has some things that they really need the help. And I, I, you know, I mean, how do you call it? Like, realistically, there is, you know, the, the saying, like, there's plenty fish in the sea. Mm-hmm. It goes for both genders. Totally. You know what I mean? And so I'm sure, so, you know, the, the problem is, is like what I hate is that I see that person happier with someone else. Yeah. I mean, after yeah. 10 years, how, what, you know what I mean? Right. It's like so That's, complicated. That, I totally, I'm with you on that. And I've had past breakups where I thought the same thing. I was like, you get out and as like a, me talking about me as a petty guy, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. if she even remotely smiles any day after we break up, I'm going to be fucking crushed. But then you, right now, you're so in the trenches, mm-hmm. you need to take a step back and just get out of the trench and look around. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. There's other options. We don't just have to keep, mm-hmm. you know, pressing hard downfield here. We, we can go left or right. And then with time, too, I found how petty I actually was. I was like, wait a minute. I absolutely want this person to be happy with someone else. And honestly, especially how you know you're sounding you should almost want her to be even more happy with someone else because yeah because it dude once you take that that social pressure off or or even that that scoreboard of like tit for tat well i got to be equally happy as her if we split like just put the whole if if i was in your shoes i would have an honest conversation with her and say hey you know i know i screwed up in the past here's what bugs me currently about our relationship if we can't fix it let's move on and then as a guy like what i did with each breakup i would just double and triple down on all the shit that i'm really into whether that's work or for me it was like flipping furniture you know creating content like whatever maybe that's working out for you like whatever that looks like just double and triple down on that while the pain's still there you know give it six seven eight nine months maybe a year of working hard on something else you'll notice the pain wears off and you're like, oh yeah, no. I, Ashley's the same way as me. We're we're rooting for our exes. Mm. We're like, you go, which sounds crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't think it's crazy. I I, th- I see the support you guys have, and and that comes from a place of like just so much love for everyone. You know, it's like y- y- you're gonna find your person. You know, one of the things Absolutely. too is like Kevin and I always say we're both able to be, I'm not saying like we're so successful, but we're able to be successful in our days because we don't have to worry about one another. Like we know that we're good. We're constant. We trust each other. We, there's, we know we're going to be good at the end of the night so we can focus our energy on what needs to be done throughout the day. And yeah. if you can't do that with her and vice versa, you're never going to let yourself accomplish all that you're able to accomplish because in the back of your mind that's always going to be there if you had to fight the night before you're not going to be able to focus as much on work and things like that um and i think that's honestly why a lot of people kind of get held back so i just think it's not you're so self- darn right right trust me kevin and i have been through it all before we've met each other so <laughs> and everyone deserves to meet the person that they can it's not selfish to it's not choose great. your fr- yourself i like to think that way yeah, yeah. No, it's right. yeah, no, it's absolutely, and it's fair to her. Have the honest conversation of what next steps look like, 
as hard as that conversation might be, obviously, because the end result's probably a split, but at least you can say, okay, we, we, we did have a conversation. We, you know, went over A to Z of everything wrong, everything right in the relationship, and then ultimately, you, you, the craziest thing is like, you might have that conversation with her, and she might be like, yeah, no, like, get the hell out of here, you know? Respectfully. Right. Which is great. Oh, I, which then it's like. I already has gone out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Once the engagement was gone, I kind of got kicked out and you yeah. know, I had to get my own place. So, yeah. Yeah. I get it. I mean, it's tough, too, because 10 years, that's that's totally. more than just a relationship now. That that's And also, that's comfort, you know? So, yes. it's just, sometimes it's just easier. Yeah. Even if you're not super happy, it's it's easy. Yeah. It's um, true. It's true. It's just having that person coming back to it, but then a few days later, it's just the same cycle comes yeah. back. Again. Totally. And you can have both. You can have, like, the happy uh, person to come back to and... Yeah, it, you know, totally. So. Yeah, it's... it's. Uh, I, I think in your heart, you know the right call, and obviously the, the heart's calls are probably one of the most toughest to even make, you know? It is, Kevin. It is. It's so tough. You're right. Um, but, dude, we're, we're rooting for you. We're here every step of the way. I'm going to shoot you a DM after this. Let's stay in touch. I appreciate um, that, man. Hundred percent. We're here with you. Thank you so much for your service, and we'll have to we'll check it up with you in maybe a month or so. We'll have to do another. All right, uh, not a problem at all. Feel free. Awesome, man. Great catching up with you. Have a good day. All right, you guys. Thank you for your support. Take care. Good talking to y'all. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. -bye. That feels good. Does it? That feels. I think we're onto something here, gang. That feels good. Yeah. Right? It makes me really sad just because, I mean, you've been in previous relationships that have been pretty toxic. I've been in definitely relationships that have been yeah. toxic. And it's so sad because at the time, like, I remember, I mean, we're not bringing any names and anything, but I remember, like, asking you, like, did you ever think you're going to marry these people? And you were just like, I just thought that was life. Like, you're yeah. just kind of miserable all the time. Right. So it, like, makes me sad that people are kind of in that chapter right now. Sometimes, though, with relationship advice, if, if you've had a few rounds of exes, it's like watching a movie that you've already seen. Oh, we all have been through the same shit. And you're watching it with extent. someone on the phone who hasn't seen the movie yet. And you're yeah. like, bro, yeah. bro, yeah, <laughs> relax. Okay, breathe. It's good. Go get busy. Yeah. Go get fit as hell. You know, like it's like a pattern. Yeah. No, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, we've all been through some. It's like that thing where we always say like, oh. I always say sometimes, too, like whenever my parents were like, we've been there, we know what it's like, we've been in love in high school, too. But I'm like, if you sat down and told me exactly what you went through, mm. I would be like, oh, shit, you really do yeah. know. Because you, you have, just think they say that. Yeah. Like, no, no, they, you they have know. hair over one eye, and you're like, it's not a phase. <laughs> I had that. I'm called the dark moon. <laughs> I don't have that. <laughs> yeah. So. My path is lit by lava lamps. They're like, no. Did I, you have lava lamps? I love those love things. Lamp. Yeah, those are cool. Well, all right, gang, that is the relationship hotline love hour on the No Limits podcast. Look at us, huh? Uh, if you like this episode, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It means the yeah. absolute world to us. And we'll call you next time. Yeah, let's, get, let's make this a more routine thing here, huh? I like it. Be on the lookout on Instagram stories for the next time we do a live relationship hotline caller episode. Mm -hmm. I think we get one in. At least once a month. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Maybe every other episode is a live caller. Could be good. Yeah. All right. Hugs and kisses, gang. Absolutely love you. This is a No Let's Podcast. Podcast.